So today we're going to discuss and answer the question, can a ketogenic diet cause a fatty liver if you're not consuming enough vegetables, okay? I've done a video on this in the past, but I didn't really explain where I got this data from. So I'm gonna show you right now. It's uh, this thing called Guyton's Physiology, okay? It says, effect of insulin lack on causing a fatty liver. So they're talking about when you have insulin lack or not enough insulin or low insulin in relationship to it causing a fatty liver, okay? Now that's weird because here I am reading this and seeing people improve their fatty livers with the ketogenic diet, but then I see Guyton talking about it can cause a fatty liver. This is weird. So I could just ignore it or just try to understand what he's talking about. He has a lot of great data in this book and some of his other books. And so I just didn't want to dismiss it. I wanted to kind of dig further to see if there's actually any connection because it's conflicting, okay? So it says this, strange as it may seem, Though insulin lack causes dissolution of the fat stores, which he's talking about dissolving of the fat stores, in adipose tissue, it causes a great increase in the amount of stored triglycerides in the liver, leading to a very fatty liver. The reason is the following. The excess of free fatty acids in the blood causes rapid diffusion of fatty acids into the liver cells. So when you do research, you not only need to type in ketosis or the ketogenic diet with fatty liver, but ketogenic diet with this term liver stetosis, which basically means fatty liver. And you're going to find some interesting studies that pull up. You're going to see a combination of animal studies and studies on children with epilepsy. Okay. Now, when you actually read the animal studies, you're going to see a link between the ketogenic diet and developing a fatty liver. But again, with the animal studies, you have to question what diet they put them on. Um, I've done other videos on a high fat diet, which really with the animal uh, child that they fed them, a high fat diet is really a high fat plus a high sugar diet. But they also have um, a ketogenic diet for, for mice, okay? And I wanna show you what they are giving these mice. Ingredients, lard, butter, corn oil, make mental note of that, casein, cellulose, mineral mix, vitamin mix, and dextrose, which is synthetic sugar. And the vitamins are synthetic, by the way. So I'm going to put a link down below uh, of some interesting data on genetically modified oils, specifically corn oil and soy oil. And this is what they found. Soy oil and corn oil can induce a fatty liver even more than fructose. Okay. So I really think it's the corn oil in this uh, mice chow that's creating the fatty liver, not the ketogenic diet, because the diet that you're on and the diet that I recommend is not this version, okay? And also the casein is probably, is a type A1, which is inflammatory. It's probably not an A2. And corn oil is really um, omega-6 and it's gonna create inflammatory conditions too, not just the fatty liver, so, uh, which can lead to all sorts of other problems. So you can pretty much just ignore the animal studies, but let's switch gears to the children's studies. Okay, let's see what they say. Here's one right here. Is ketogenic diet treatment hepatotoxic for children with epilepsy? So this is what they found. They found an increase in ALT. That's a very specific enzyme in the liver that indicates liver damage, any fatty liver, and liver stetosis, which is a fatty liver, are the most frequent hepatic side effects of a ketogenic diet. Now, wait a second. How can that be? So many people get benefit. And this study, it mentions it can cause a fatty liver in 5.7% of the children doing it. And then here's another study, the influence on the ketogenic diet on liver function in children and adolescents with epilepsy, okay? And this one, it had significant effects on serum levels of ALT. That's that liver enzyme I talked about. All right, so let's dig further on what these children were put on, okay, as far as a diet. Is it the same diet that you're on? Absolutely not. So the foods that they put these kids on, which is called the traditional ketogenic diet, uh, include, you know, prepackaged canned foods like keto kale, which is refined soy oils. We talked about that over here. Corn syrup solids, corn starch, Here's one called RCF, which is Ross Carbohydrate Formula. Soy formula with iron. 
Genetically modified oils like corn and soil can induce a fatty liver even more than fructose. Now, the other foods that these kids uh, were consuming were things like chicken, and it's probably not organic, with mayonnaise. Again, more soy oil, usually. So they're kind of doing a, what's called a version of keto, which is dirty keto, which I don't recommend, okay? And that would be like doing cheese whiz, for example, or diet soda, or fast food without the bun. They're still lowering insulin, so you're seeing the benefits of that, but they're not using quality ingredients. So if you allow certain things to slip in the diet, like these genetically modified soy oils, or dextrose, or maltodextrin, that could potentially be the reason why Guyton talks about it creating a fatty liver. Now, the next topic I wanna to talk about is vegetables. Why would you wanna increase your vegetables on a ketogenic diet? First of all, I think uh, it enhances the nutrient profile. Now, can you get all of your nutrients from a carnivore diet? Absolutely, if it's done healthily. If you're doing um, organ meats, if you're doing cod liver oil, high quality fish and seafood. But if you're doing an unhealthy version of the carnivore diet or even the ketogenic diet, you're gonna set yourself up for a lot of problems. So how do vegetables protect you against the fatty liver? Number one, they have the highest concentration of nitrates. Now, when you think of nitrates, you think of like nitrates in bacon, right? Like sodium nitrate or potassium nitrate. No, we're not talking about that nitrate. That's a chemical. We're talking about the natural form of nitrates in vegetables that are beneficial to your heart, and they also have the potential to protect against a fatty liver. They've been known to actually help you decrease blood pressure, uh, support cardiovascular function, especially the inside of the artery. I'll put some links down below. That's just one thing. Plus, the fiber in the vegetables can provide the microbes, the food it needs to then give you butyric acid which can lower insulin because it improves insulin resistance. It helps your blood sugars. That's one thing right there. Also, the, the microbes help you recycle bile. 90% of the bile salts that are made by the liver are recycled through the gut microbes. So if you don't have all the microbes, potentially you can have a lower amount of bile in the body and potentially you can have a backup of cholesterol and fat in the liver because Bile helps to extract the excess of cholesterol and fat in the liver. Bile also helps prevent gallstones, by the way. And then you have phytonutrients. Okay, phytonutrients are the things in vegetables that actually help protect the tissues from damage. They're antioxidants. Um, they can help detoxify chemicals. They can help reduce inflammatory conditions in the liver. Then you have other nutrients as well. You have vitamin C, vitamin E, and then you have the minerals, which is magnesium and potassium in the vegetables, which can help improve the high insulin state, which actually is the primary driver for a fatty liver. So the question, can a ketogenic diet cause a fatty liver? If you're not consuming enough vegetables, potentially I think it can if you're doing an unhealthy version of keto. Guys, thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next video. So I wanna thank you for being here and watching my videos. If you haven't already subscribed, go ahead and do so so you can stay informed of future videos.